everyone. Welcome back to Science with Miss Gwen. So today we are going to talk about ponds versus rivers. I know yesterday we talked about all the different types of bodies of water. You have a pond, a lake, an ocean, and a river. So today we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look into ponds and rivers to see how they are similar and how they are different. So, first we're going to talk about what is a pond. I know yesterday we said it was a smaller body of water. It's just basically a smaller version of a lake. So here's a picture of a pond. You can see it's surrounded by mountains, and it's just a very small body of water that's surrounded by land on all sides. How does a pond form? Well, a pond forms by rain, so when it rains, in low areas, um, you can see a pond forming, and it takes a lot of rain over a long period of time. And also, when uh, water moves from high parts of the earth to low parts of the earth, it creates ponds. It's a place where water collects itself. Ponds do change depending on the weather. So here is a picture of a pond. You can see the outline here. This is where the water used to be. It's like a little light gray area. And look where the water is now. So this picture is showing us how a pond dried up because there wasn't enough rain to keep the pond filled. So if there's not enough rainfall, ponds can dry up very, very quickly. And you lose that body of water. Next, we'll talk about a river. What is a river? So a river is a body of water that flows um, through Earth's surface from its highest point to its lowest point. So right here, you can see the river is separating these two pieces of land, and it's flowing. You can't see it flowing, but you know that it's flowing because water does not stay still unless it's in a pond or a lake. So how does water flow in a river? Here you can see a waterfall, which is showing you the high point of the river. So this is where the river starts. The water is flowing from the highest point of where it started to the low point. So you can see that it's coming off this cliff right here and into this body of water. And you can see that the river is flowing because it has little ripples in it or little waves in the water. That tells you that it's moving very, very quickly. So again, rivers flow from the highest part all the way to the lowest part of the earth. And usually rivers dump out into a lake or an ocean depending on where it ends. So, now we're going to look at how are ponds and rivers different. So, ponds do not flow. Remember, they are a body of water that's collected by rain. So, they stay in one place. Rivers flow downhill. This just means that they move from the highest point of the earth to the lowest point of the earth. So they're always moving downhill. They never move from a low point of Earth to a high point. That's, they can't do it. They don't have enough energy. So rivers flow from the highest point to the lowest point of the Earth. Rivers are constantly moving, which changes the Earth's shape. So you can see here that there's all rocks and landforms surrounding the river. And this means that as the river is flowing, it's taking some of these materials, such as the rock, sand, dirt, and moving it to a different place. Remember, we call this erosion. And erosion is when sediments, such as rocks, soil, and sand, move from one part of the earth to another. So it's very different from a pond because remember a pond just sits here it has very little movement it collects water from the rain but
but it really does not move. This river has a constant motion, so it's constantly moving Earth's materials around. So, if it's constantly moving, it's making changes to the Earth. So now what you're going to do is you are going to answer the question, what causes more erosion, ponds or rivers? And why do you think that? Remember, when you're answering the question, your sentences should start with a capital letter and it should end with a period. You need to have two complete sentences for this activity. So make sure you are using at least five words in each sentence. And tomorrow we will come back for more Science with Miss Lynn. See you then. Bye.